If a game involves aspects of randomness and chance, is it possible for one player to be so lucky while playing that game that we can say with mathematical certainty that they are officially too lucky? This is actually the most requested video topic I have ever had because just over a month ago, there was some big drama in the Minecraft community. One of the most popular players, someone called Dream, they've got over 15 million subscribers on YouTube, they're probably on Twitch as well, I don't know. But they were accused of cheating because in their Minecraft speedruns, they were having incredibly good luck. And because all the arguments against them, all the proof that they were cheating was based on probability and statistics, an overwhelming number of you got in touch with me and asked if I could take a closer mathematical look at it. And I was very happy to do so, and my goodness, there were some interesting results. Wait, a beard? How long did that take to film? I know a lot has already been said about the dream speedrun controversy, but I think I'm actually quite well placed to make a video about it because I am a disinterested party. That's not to say I'm not uninterested, like I am interested in what's going on, but I haven't got an interest, like an investment in either of the two parties. So I'm, I'm disinterested, I don't care who's right, but I'm interested, I want to make sure we get to that right answer. And we're going to have a pretty wide spectrum of people watching this video. If you're here for the Minecraft, uh, first of all, welcome to the channel. I'll try and go through the maths as clearly as I can. If you're here for the maths, regular viewers, thanks for showing up. Uh, I also didn't know much about Minecraft before this, so I will try to go through the Minecraft details nice and carefully. Some friends of mine have given me a lot of help. So we'll start with a very quick recap of what the controversy was. Minecraft is a game that can be played in many different ways. Some players just want to explore the landscape, mine resources and craft items. Other players, however, like to achieve some kind of objective and effectively, you know, complete the game. And in Minecraft Java Edition 1.16, you can finish the game by killing an Ender Dragon. And of course, the moment you can finish a video game, people are going to try and speed run it. Speed running is the challenge of finishing a video game as fast as possible. And if you're not aware of this, it's super popular. There are videos all over YouTube, streams on Twitch. People love watching people finish games incredibly quickly because it involves a lot of skill. Now, to speed run Minecraft 1.16, players normally start by collecting useful items in the overworld traditionally done by finding a village. That's the fastest way to obtain a number of key resources. They then head to the nether, which is a different dimension by traveling through a nether portal. In a speed run, you, that, that requires getting water from a river and lava from a lava lake. Don't try to understand the logic, just go with it. Once they're in the nether, players can barter gold that they've mined with Piglin, who will give them different items, some of which will be ender pearls. The players then have to find a nether fortress where they can kill blazers, and blazers will sometimes, when they die, drop a blaze rod. The ender pearls and the blaze rods means the player can now activate yet another portal which will get them through to the, pretty much the end of the game. They pop out, there's a dragon they've got to kill, an exit portal, and then that's done, the credits roll. And the challenge of speedrunning is just to find the fastest way to do a certain combination of all these different things to get to the end of the game as quickly as possible. And traditionally, I tend to watch speedruns of classic games, things like Super Mario Brothers, where yes, there's some luck, like there's some randomness in the game, but it's mostly skill. I mean, even things like Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, a very old game. Watching people hone the skill required to do that is absolutely incredible. In Minecraft, while there is obviously a lot of skill, there's way more luck than you get in a lot of other speedruns. 
For example, when trading with a piglin, there are actually 17 different distinct items they might give you, and inside the game code, there's a table for the weights of how likely each of these different items are. If you want to get an ender pearl, you can see that's weighted 20, and 20 out of 423 gives you a probability of 4.7. 2.8-ish, roughly 5%. So you've got to do a lot of trades to get ender pearls. And if you start putting gold ingots on the ground, a piglin will stand there and sequentially trade until they've used up all of the gold. What you can do, little pro tip here, is if you put them in a bit of a hole, it will stop them from wandering away when they're done. You can then go and start a parallel series of trades with a different piglin and if you get them all going at once, uh, eventually you should get enough Ender Pearls. And in the six live streams that Dream did uh, from October 2020, across them there were 262 barters. And so you would expect, on average, 12 of those trades to result in Ender Pearls. Dream, however, got Ender Pearls from 42 of their barters. That's over three times the average. Blaze rods are a bit more simple. They occur 50% of the time you kill a blaze. Over the same six live streams, Dream killed 305 blazes, which should give you 152 or 153 blaze rods on average. Dream got 211. Dream was getting pretty lucky. Now that we know precisely how lucky Dream was, the next step is to calculate what is the actual likelihood of someone being that lucky. What is the probability that you get Ender Pearls 42 times from 262 barters? We can work that out using this, the binomial formula. I love it, it's such a good formula. It gives you the exact probability for a specific number of successes. In here you put the probability of success, you then raise it to the power of how many successes you want, and here's the probability of failure, which is to the power of all the other times when you don't want a success, and the term out the front, that's the choose function, which compensates for the number of different ways you can arrange where the successes are. So like in this case, we don't care when people get the ender pearls, we just care how many they get. Using that formula, we can fill in a whole table to give you the probability that you will get any number of successful barters resulting in ender pearls, and we plot that. You can see the most likely is 12, up at 11.6% probability, and this middle clump between 1 and 24 successful barters is 99.9%. .9%. You are overwhelmingly likely to be in this part of the distribution. Whereas Dream is at 42 all the way out here. That has a probability of happening of 0, 0.00 a bunch of zeros, 4. Although it's slightly deceptive when you're looking this far out to just pick one specific value because there's so many other nearby ones it could be. So what we actually do is we look at the probability of getting this or better which is the same number of zeros, but then five, six. I'm actually gonna stop writing that as a percentage and just do it as a straight up number. The probability is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 12. And sometimes it's useful to think of that in terms of odds. And so that is a probability of one in 1 1.8 times 10 to the 11. We can now repeat the whole process for blaze rods, which have a 50% chance of happening each time you kill a blaze, and the probability of getting 211 or more blaze rods out of 305 kills is 8.8 .8 .8 times 10 to the negative 12. Also incredibly small, not dissimilar to the other one. And that represents odds of 1 in 1.1 times 10 to the 11. So that's 1 in 110 trillion. Very, very unlikely. And if we assume that these two probabilities are independent, the chance of them both happening, we multiply them together. And the overall probability is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 23. That's a 1 in 2 times 10 to the 22 chance. A 2 with 22 zeros after it. Getting a result as good or better than what Dream got is vanishingly unlikely.
But just the straight odds, that's clearly not the whole story. I mean, you're watching me sit here have arguably better luck than I have any right to have. What are the odds of this happening? Is this real? Have I faked it somehow? Well, there's a lot of things you don't know. How long have I been sat here for? Where did this beard come from? How can we compensate for all the unknowns outside of the actual bit we're looking at? And don't worry, this is where more statistics and probability come in. And actually, it's a good time to go to the very first segment of this video, part one, the attack. Part one, the attack. It all kicked off when Dream submitted one of their speedruns to speedrun.com. And it would have been, at the time, the fourth fastest speed run of this part of Minecraft in the world. However, the moderation team at speedrun.com were not convinced that Dream was using an original, unaltered installation of Minecraft. They thought the luck indicated Dream must be cheating. They had somehow changed the version of the game they were playing. And so they released a summary video that went through their investigation into the mathematics of the probabilities in a nice kind of introductory level. And they released a 29 page PDF that went through it in, I would say, a rambly level of detail. The starting point was some observations from other speedrunners that Dream had had very good luck with the Ender Pearls and Blaze Rods across six consecutive live streams in October 2020. They then did the same calculation that we did with the binomial distribution, combined them the same way, and got the 10 to the negative 23 probability that we previously saw. But they didn't stop there. In fact, the vast majority of the paper is dedicated to looking at how there could be some kind of bias in their findings. They accounted for four different ways that their investigation into this probability could be unfair against Dream and tried to compensate for all the unknown aspects of how Dream could have got this lucky. I, we don't have time in this video to go through all four of those, so I'm going to look mainly at sampling bias in stream selection. This is the idea that if Dream was doing a lot of different live streams, someone could have just maliciously picked the ones which made Dream look the most guilty. However, we can fix that with some mathematics as I will demonstrate with a coin flipping example. Let's say I've uploaded a video to YouTube of me flipping a coin a hundred times. Because I have, I've done that. Uh, it's on my second channel, you can check it out. It's there in case you ever can't be bothered flipping your own coin. And I'm using a coin which is yellow on one side for heads and it's blue for tails. However, let's say, hypothetically, some malicious actor has edited out just a run of 12 flips from the middle where I got 10 tails out of 12 times I flipped the coin. And they're saying that clearly the coin can't be fair. If you do the binomial distribution on this, there's only a 1.6% chance that you'd get 10 tails out of 12 flips, or a 1.9% chance that you would get 10 or more tails out of 12 flips. Clearly, it can't be a fair coin if the chance of getting my results are so incredibly small. Now, you come along, and you're not sure who's telling the truth here. So you're going to try and compensate for the fact that you know I did a hundred flips. And let's say hypothetically, you can't find the original footage. So yeah, yeah, I know Matt flipped it a hundred times. And obviously this malicious actor has picked a run of flips with the smallest probability of having occurred if the coin was fair, like the, the P value. But there were loads of other runs of flips they could have picked. Technically, they could have picked any of the individual flips. There's a hundred of those to pick. They could have just cut one out. They could have picked any of the 99 pairs of flips. They could have picked any of the 98 runs of three, any of the 97 runs of four, all the way up. In fact, there are 5,050 different possible consecutive runs of flips this malicious actor 
could have picked. Now at this point, to be honest, you've got the general idea. If you're looking at some results, you've got to bear in mind that there were probably more results which someone could have picked from and you've got to somehow factor that in. The details of how we do this get difficult to follow though because you're taking lots of inverses of, of other inverses and you're rounding things up or down and there's no way you can pick this all up on the first pass. I'm gonna go through the details just so you get a flavor of it, but don't panic to understand it properly. You'll have to pause the video here and go away and do some more reading. That said, to give me the benefit of the doubt, you're gonna work out what is the probability if you flip a coin a hundred times, if the coin is fair, that there's a run in there somewhere out of any of the 5,050, which is one point 9% likely to happen if you flip a fair coin or worse. So you're giving me every possible chance to show my innocence. And to work that out, so the probability would be one minus the probability of that not happening. It's just easier to work it out that way. So uh, the chance of it not happening, 0.981. You raise that to the power of 5,050 and you subtract it off one and you get one. It's like a hundred percent, but strictly speaking, that's not the exact probability because to multiply them together, like we've effectively done by raising it to the power that assumes each of the different potential runs are independent, but they're not, they're, they're overlapping. Some of the, the coin flips from one sequence are also in a different sequence. However, if you were to do it correctly, you would always get this value or smaller. So you've done the upper bound, the maximum possible value, because you're giving me the benefit of the doubt. And in this case, it is the maximum value, it's 100%. So you've not managed to prove that my coin must be biased. I'm exonerated, I'm very happy. And a oh, fun fact, the exact probability is actually 88.3%. So the rounding up took it a little bit higher in my favor. They have done the same thing with dreams results. And if you take the probability of having the amount of luck that occurred on the trades for ender pearls, and instead of just being the six live streams from the sample, if you expand it out to all 11 that could have been picked and you do the same procedure, the probability goes up to a new upper bound of eight times 10 to the negative 10. It's still vanishingly unlikely. And this is the number which is as much in dreams favor as possible. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, my book Humble Pie, When Math Goes Wrong in the Real World has just come out in paperback in the US and it's full of very similar stories. So if you're enjoying this video, I guarantee you will enjoy the book as well. I will have more details about how you can get copies with a free signed gift and I'm doing a online talk at Harvard Bookstore on the 4th of Feb. All of that at the end of the video. Now we need to move on both from Humble Pie and from the accusations against Dream because the PDF goes into incredible details about all the other ways that they very carefully calculated an upper bound in Dream's favor. And if I had one criticism of their paper, they go into a level of technical detail and language that's so dense it feels almost deliberately obtuse. I don't think it's malicious, I just think they were so worried about people going through their argument with a fine tooth cone that they overdid the technical language and the details and I don't think it's amazing math communication, unlike other things. So we'll put that aside for now and we'll move on to section two, Dream's response. Part two, the response. Dream responded with both a video of their own on their second channel and their own 19 page PDF full of mathematics. This was written by an anonymous astrophysicist who is apparently an expert in astro statistics. There you go. They are based at an online science consulting company who Dream paid to write this mathematical report for them. And before we get into any of the details, the one important thing to note is that they agree on the headline statistic, the naive calculation that the probability of getting those enderpearl trades and those blaze rods is a 1 in 2 times 10 to the 22 chance. 
That's the hardcore maths. No one is arguing that. What everyone's arguing is how you compensate for all the other unknowns. How many live streams there are, how many people are playing the game, or how many things from the game you could choose to analyze. All of that is where this lot of mathematical working out differs from what the mods on speedrun.com did. And I'll be honest, I accused the previous paper of being a bit obtuse. This one is basically it's maths chaff. Like it's terms I recognize and calculations that I'm familiar with, but the way it's put together is not nonsensical, but it's it's clearly just trying to pad together enough maths that a surface reading of it gives some element of doubt, a reasonable amount of doubt that maybe Dream genuinely got those results from a normal version of Minecraft. So I'll give you two examples of what I mean. First of all, there's a lot of stuff in there, which is true, but you wonder why they've put it in. So here they show that you can change the expression from the original paper, you can rearrange it using a thing called the binomial approximation. Don't get me wrong, big fan, but there's no reason why you would put that in the paper. That's just a step you would do when you're actually crunching the calculation. It's nothing to do with the theory or the concepts that they're trying to get across. Not only that, but it's missing a closing bracket. That is an unforgivable sin in mathematics and certainly does not indicate that this was put together with care and fact-checking attention. And here, this number, the actual odds come out to be about one in 6,300. That number is incorrect. And this is within their own hypothetical situation they came up with. The idea that if you flip a coin a hundred times, what's the chance that you get 20 heads in a row? And I'm not the first person to point out that that number is wrong, but as a expert in getting things wrong, I thought I should try and work out what they actually did incorrectly. And I ran the simulations myself and discovered they must have simulated it for heads and tails. And then to compensate for the fact that it's just heads, they accidentally divided by two when they should have multiplied by two. And that's why they're out by a factor of four. And it totally changes the thrust of their argument because it moves what they claim is the correct answer from one side of approximation to the other other and it's just indicative of a lack of care and attention when putting together even their own hypothetical examples. I absolutely agree with their point that probability calculations are hard. Often in stats there is not one right way to do something which is why they don't agree on how to compensate for outside influences. The only thing we agree on is this original stat. And while we're here, a quick subtle side point. They use the example of a lottery in terms of explaining that unlikely things happen, which I agree. However, their whole paper is bringing down the odds that Dream could have got these results on a fair version of Minecraft down to 1 in 10 million. But that's not the raw stat. That's still 2 times 10 to the 22. This is already compensating for the fact that there were lots of opportunities for this to occur. It's not like the lottery. If you compensate for how many people actually buy lottery tickets, the odds of someone winning the lottery at all is one. People win the lottery all the time. And this one in 10 million figure is already compensating for the fact that loads of people were doing a lot of speed runs. And I don't like the fact that they're flipping between the two. I would say a little bit disingenuously. I mean, the, it just makes me sad. I know I started as a disinterested party, but I can say of the two papers, this one is by a long shot the least convincing. Please don't come and brigade me, dream stands. I'm just going off the maths here. However, there's a way around this. I'm going to ignore all the compensation that both parties have done and just take the agreed raw statistic of 1 in 2 times 10 to the 22, and we will move forward solely using that. And to do this, we need to take a detour via a much more analog game. When you roll two dice, not all outcomes are equal. A total of two is as unlikely as they come. Of the 36 different ways that two dice can land, only one of them is snake eyes. Whereas of the other 36 different ways they can land, a full six of them will give you a total of seven. That is the most common outcome you get when you roll two dice. Now before Minecraft, back in the day where games were analog, 
dice were a common source of randomness. And so I thought we'll take a quick aside to look at an equally spectacular world record from a much more old school game. Ah, craps. It's a two dice game where you want to avoid rolling a seven. I mean, the rules are more complicated than that, but the short version is if you roll a seven, you're out. And the current world record for the most consecutive rolls in craps without getting a seven was set by Patricia DeMero in 2009 when she rolled 154 consecutive non-sevens. And the probability of not getting a 7 is 30 out of the 36 options to the power of 154 is a probability of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 13. That is 1 in 1.5 times 10 to the 12. It is less likely than the run of Enderpearl Trades that Dream God. And I actually looked this up when I was trying to find another improbable achievement in a game to compare with what happened to Dream. And this is the most unlikely result I was able to come across. So the question now is, did Patricia cheat or is this legitimate? To put it in context, the previous world record for craps was set 20 years before that, and it was a mere 118 rolls in a row without getting a 7, which has a probability of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 10, 1 in 2.2 times 10 to the 9. Now that, that I find plausible. You see, according to statistics from 2011, there are about 3,500 casinos in the world. I estimated they have an average of, I don't know, 5 craps tables each. Some would have way more, some would have far fewer. You can get about six games of craps in per hour on average. I've decided the average casino is open for, I don't know, 12 hours a day. Some are open 24-7, some are only open occasionally. And just to put it all together, I decided to look at 10 years. Across that period of time, my rough fairly conservative estimate is every decade there are 4.7 times 10 to the 9 games of craps and that's twice as many as the 118 odds of 1 in 2.2 times 10 to the 9 so I can totally believe it's about a once a decade occurrence now Patricia's that's like a thousand times less likely so that's like a 1 in 10 chance of happening once a century Maybe my numbers were too conservative. It could be more likely. It, it's right on the edge of being plausible. Like it's feasible, but it's still very unlikely. But of course, we need to bear in mind, I didn't just set out looking into the odds of craps for no reason. It was because of this record that I was even looking at the game of craps. There are loads of other games where something unbelievable could have happened, but hasn't. So I decided to pick a different game, Roulette, and then look into the odds after I'd already selected the game. And there are two world records in Roulette. The world record for the most consecutive spins of the same color is 32. Absolutely incredible. That's a 1 in 1.1 times 10 to the 10 occurrence. And the world record for most consecutive numbers, uh, the number 19, came up seven times in a row. And that is a 1 in 3 times 10 to the 9 odds event. So they're all around 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10. And that seems to be the ballpark for unlikely things happening in games of chance in casinos. And Patricia's incredible run at craps was just the meta lucky. It was the luckiest of the lucky ones. And that's why it got pushed out to something that was a 1 in 10 to the 12 chance of actually occurring. Now, Dream's odds with the Ender Pearl trades was at the level of 10 to the 11. So pretty much the same, slightly more likely. But the thing is, Dream didn't just have that run of good luck. They also had one in 10 to the 11 odds in terms of their blaze drops. For comparison, it's like if Patricia had her world record 154 rolls and craps and then turned around and equaled the roulette world record of 32 consecutive spins on the same color. In fact, the odds of Patricia doing both of those at the same time is more likely than what happened to Dream. What happened to Patricia boggles the mind in terms of its odds. There's no way you would have two things like that happening 
at the same time. So to try and put Dream's incredible luck in two unrelated parts of the game in context, I'm going to introduce a new unit in the field of probability. Introducing the 10 billion human second century. The 10 billion human second century is my attempt to put an extreme upper bound on the odds any one event can have and still potentially occur as being done by humans. So 100 years is equivalent to 3.15 times 10 to the 9 seconds. Yes, a century is roughly pi billion seconds. Let's not get distracted by that now, even though it's amazing. It's within half a percent. We then multiply that by 10 billion humans. Again, we're rounding up to the maximum number of humans. And this result, 3 times 10 to the 19, means that if every single human, there are 10 billion of us, were all doing the same thing every single second, non-stop, around the clock, for a century, that thing will have occurred 3 times 10 to the 19 times. So if anything is plausibly going to happen as being done by a human, it has to have odds below that. So if something takes more than a second to do, it's odds had better be below 3 times 10 to the 19. If something is not being done by all of 10 billion humans, the odds better be below that. If something's not being done constantly for a century, it needs to be below 3 times 10 to the 19. And I know when we were looking at things in casinos, things that have occurred but are very unlikely were around the 10 to the 9, 10 to the 10 region. And the world record for craps at 10 to the 12 is like the extreme version. And that's way below. 3 times 10 to the 19, because it is a very, very big upper bound. Nothing that a human does will ever have odds worse than 1 in 3 times 10 to the 19. And, as a quick aside, I'm not saying you can't ever do something which has more than 3 times 10 to the 19 outcomes. You could roll a 10-sided dice. 20 times, you'd get a very long number, which is bigger than 10 to the 19. But that number is meaningless, and this is an interesting nuance of probability. It's like prior knowledge, it depends what you wanted to get. If you want to get any number, you can do that. If you get a number that has previously been agreed to be amazing, and what we're talking about in these situations are when there's something people want to achieve, and we're looking at the odds of that. Not the odds of getting anything. That's the difference between throwing a dart out of an aeroplane and it perfectly landing, like, miles down, on the ground, bam, right in the bullseye of a target, versus just throwing a dart out of a plane, letting it land, you land, find the dart, and then paint the target around it. Very different probabilities. Same, same action, different probabilities. In the case of speedrunning Minecraft, it is agreed what outcomes a lucky player wants to happen. They want to get ender pearls as fast as possible. They want to get the blaze rods as quickly as they can. And for Dream's live streams, they had odds in the region of 2 times 10 to the 22. That is way above the 3 times 10 to a 19, 10 billion human second century. So all the extra stuff that was put in the paper, all the p-hacking, all the optimal stopping, the selection bias, all fascinating and very important parts of statistics for normal statistical investigations where you're trying to tease out subtle differences from stats. But when someone does something with odds of 2 times 10 to the 22, way beyond, like just a thousand times bigger than the 10 billion human second century, you don't have to worry about anything else. That is never gonna happen. Before my final verdict, a couple last things to clear up. Yes, I have dismissed a lot of the mathematics and statistics in the two papers. And that's partly because some of it is terrible and partly because I think a lot of it isn't necessary. I have focused solely on the 2 times 10 to the 22 odds that everyone agrees on. Because that's all you need. You compare that to the 10 billion human second century of 3 times 10 to the 19. Now, I know not everyone is fluent in scientific notation and orders of magnitude. So I appreciate often I've habitually been rounding or even dismissing those lead numbers because a lot of the time all you really care about is how big the number at the top 
top here is, which is why I say that what Dream did is a thousand times more likely than this number because that is just three bigger at the top. And when numbers are this big, but yes, you could calculate it unnecessarily precisely and factory and leap years and the exact human population and everything. But the point is one number is much bigger than the other number. And this is the absolute upper bound. You can't just think, oh yeah, but thousands of people are playing the game and that makes up the difference. No, no, no. What I'm saying is if every single human in existence was doing a speed run of Minecraft every single second around the clock, every human doing it for a century, the odds are still you would never see a result anywhere near what Dream got. We don't have to compensate for how many opportunities there are or how many people are doing it. That's all factored in. If every human was doing nothing but speedrunning Minecraft, there's still only a one in a thousand chance that you would get ish Dream's results. It's just that ridiculous. And when you compare it to the highest probability result I actually found in any other game, and that's the world record in craps. The difference here, that's a difference of 10 orders of magnitude. So Dream's result is 10 billion times less likely than the current most unlikely thing I could find in any other game that has been officially recognized. There was just no way this happened, which is not to say that I'm saying Dream definitely cheated. And the odds are not the chance that Dream didn't cheat. All these odds are the chance you'd get that result if the version of Minecraft is exactly as we think it is. And so all we can say definitively is the version of Minecraft is not the standard probabilities that we've been told. And other people have looked into the random number generators and the code, and maybe there's an issue with how the program works, and maybe the blaze rods aren't separate to the ender pearls because the program's going wrong somehow. But I think if there was a more systematic problem like that, then you wouldn't have such an anomaly in only dreams speed runs. But whatever the case, I'm not assigning guilt. I'm just saying that definitively, as a disinterested party, I can confirm these speed runs done by Dream should not be included in the list of world records because the version of Minecraft they were played on does not match what we think it should be. Oh, it, uh, right. So Thank you so much for watching this ridiculous video all about feats of good luck. As I mentioned before, the US edition of Humble Pie is out now. It is the same as all the other editions. Well, it's the same as the other American one, actually, other than more flexible. And I have put an extra bit at the back. I added all the stories which I wasn't able to put in the book because they happened after I finished writing it. So it's kind of the updated it's the expansion pack version of Humble Pie. And because I couldn't get to the US to sign copies, what I've done instead is I got out the old printed proof of the book when it was being typeset. And so some of these pages have my handwritten corrections on them. Some don't because they were fine. I have signed every single page. If you order Humble Pie from Harvard Bookstore, I will link to it in the description below. We will send one of those sign sheets for free to the first 314 orders, at least. If we have spares, we'll keep sending them out. Oh, and they might come with the book. We might have to post them separately. Haven't worked out the logistics. Just be patient. If you order it quick enough, we will get one to you. And if you miss out, I mean, at least you're supporting an independent bookstore because other massive online retailers also sell Humble Pie. So, you know, you can choose where you want to get it from. An extra vote for Harvard Bookstore, though, tomorrow night, I'm doing a free online talk for them. So uh, 4th of February, I'll link to it in the description. Like I said, totally free, not limited to 314 people. You can come along, you can ask me questions, we'll hang out, we'll talk about math. It'll be good fun. But don't forget, order quick to get a free sign sheet from the original corrections proof. Now, if you've been wondering how long I've been sat here filming to get the incredible good luck as required by this video, don't worry. I have saved every single attempt and I'm gonna upload all of it. Hours of footage for my fantastic Patreon supporters because this this video just wouldn't be possible without them. In fact, when the whole Minecraft controversy first kicked off, I thought, you know what? Given people support me to make math videos, and there's suddenly a whole flood of young people who want to learn about statistics because of Minecraft, 
I'm obliged to do a video and thanks to the fantastic Patreon support, not only was I able to sit here until I got the video to work, uh, but Oliver Dunk has helped me out with all the Minecraft in the video, uh, Alex Genbash uh, helped me with doing the editing, Ben Sparks helped me put together some normal distributions, binomial. Um, and so there's a whole team of people and we can do it because of your support. And if you don't support me on Patreon, that's fine, don't worry. Uh, it, I know not everyone can afford it. If you're watching these videos, uh, sharing them, doing algorithm pleasing things, that's hugely appreciated as well. Thank you so much. And hopefully this video has reached a new audience of people who've now realized that they can go through stats themselves critically. And occasionally they just bear in mind that when they see something which seems too lucky to be true, occasionally it is. Hey, all right. Hey, thanks for your help. That was excellent. No worries. Although, wait, a beard? How long have you been filming for?